Welcome back to Pacers Crate, episode eight, and probably the most memorable and special edition ever. After stepping up from Austin Crozier last week, we got somebody even better. A little, uh, Reggie Miller has decided to stop by this week. We're here with David Benner. David Benner and I were there for a lot of Reggie's memories 30, 40, 50 years ago. Quinn Buckner's joined us on the set here, so we're just gonna we're just gonna share some stories. But first, Reggie, tell the fans about why you're here and what this movie premiere is all about. Well, it's called Reggie Miller winning. First of all, winning time. Reggie Miller versus the New York Knicks, which I'm sure you guys are very proud of, since you guys were back in the day, there in the middle of that when I would come to your room screaming, yelling. I can't believe the New York press was writing this about me. Do something about it, and you wouldn't do anything about it. Do you remember those days? Can you control the New York press? Nobody can control the New York press. I was actually glad for the New York press because then you weren't complaining about me. Why would I complain about you? Because you, know, you, you were all right with me. It was that guy no. that I had a problem okay. with. Okay, before we get to going on with the movie, let's talk about one thing. My life was okay till you ran down the tunnel going, they choked, they choked. Okay, let that me did ask, change things. <clears throat> okay, that changed say, things completely. Okay, in the middle of that, did they choke, yes or no? Oh, heck yeah, absolutely. Okay, so why is everyone upset with me? Because I said it? Truth hurts. Truth hurts, right? Yeah. So what's wrong with me saying it? And I, everyone but it jumps down my throat because usual, I said what everyone was thinking. As usual, you didn't think about the fallout. Which was? Which was, it would be plastered all over the New York tabloids the next day. I did not care! And, <laughs> I didn't care! And gave the Knicks fodder. I understand More fodder. That. You're but, right. To your credit, and he made a movie out of it, as it yeah, turns yeah, out. And to your credit, he backed it up. February 26th, the world premiere here at Casico Fieldhouse. Come on down. Date night, family night. Ten Bring bucks. everyone down. Pop, pop Ten dollars. Give me a little idea of what, what the movie's about. You know, give it to the fans. Just a, just a little hint of it. Dan Clore is the director. Mm -hmm. uh, called me up. ESPN is doing these 30 for 30 series. With a lot of famous directors. Things that have happened over the last 30 years in professional sports or any, or any kind of sports, really. And he's like, look, I want to do this between the relationship between the Knicks and the Pacers. And at first, I was a little hesitant because I don't want to bring up some old wounds. I mean, there's a lot of, I would, hatred is a strong word, but there's a lot of hate. Truth hurts. It. Truth hurts. Um, so I was a little, a little hesitant on doing it. Dan kind of showed me his vision of what he wanted to take this film. And also, too, it's the dynamics between Who's better, New York basketball versus Indiana basketball? Okay. Um, so that's kind of chronicled in the film as well. New York, brash, you know, hip hop, street ball. We're a little bit more jump shot, bounce pass, fundamentals. So you kind of get to see the difference between the two sides. Mixed in between a bloodbath of really three series, it begins in 92, 93, or 93, 94, and it ends with the uh, 95 series. Now the Starks headbutt starts it all, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, they really kind of got things cranked. And everybody, you can imagine this group here and the memories that we have of that time. I'm going to start with Ben. Benny, what's your favorite Reggie moment? My favorite Reggie moment? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Something to remember people are watching The day this. he retires. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite Reggie moment. No, uh, is, is this on? Just yeah, check of, of course it's on. <laughs> no, actually, I think my favorite Reggie moment uh, doesn't have anything to do with that series. It does have, have to do with the uh, 2000 Eastern Conference Finals when we finally won. Um, I think it's one thing to beat the Knicks, but then to beat the Knicks to earn the trip to the NBA Finals and the sheer joy mm -hmm. that was involved with you in particular. I, I remember that most. Well, not only to beat the Knicks, but to beat the Knicks in Madison in, in Square, Garden. Garden. Square Garden. In Madison Square Garden, yeah. Because I remember being there. And um, and I, I agree with David. It was your, you've always had this unabashed enthusiasm mm -hmm. about you, with this passion. And it was it was very evident after the game. I mean, you were jumping around, jumping up and down like a little kid. And it was, you know, I think, I've been through some of those things, and, mm -hmm. and watching that come from you was—it was just a joy to see, because I know how hard you work to finally <laughs> to slay the dragon, because that's basically what it was. Well, it, it's funny because I remember Larry coming into the locker room, locker room, Larry Bird, saying, "Look, we can't chance this going to a game seven back at our place, because we knew the Knicks were good enough to come into mm -hmm. Conseco Field House and, and win a game seven. He's like, if we want this trip 
to the finals and you guys want your dreams to come true, you're going to have to do it tonight. And I think everyone bucked up when we went out there and got a big victory. You know, all the Knicks games and the Bulls series, and uh, that was all fantastic. But for me personally, it was that Nets series because, you know, you were approaching the end at that point in mm -hmm. time. But, but with that half-court shot and then the one that really was more meaningful mm -hmm. to me was the dunk. The dunk. Like, I, I was immediately fouled. I, was, I, I did get fouled. When is the last time Reggie dunked in a game from the top of the key? That was it, and that was my last dunk. Yep. But I mean, that was that was maybe, that was maybe, it. Maybe the first. I, um, but that was a great example of your will. I think at that point you had a younger team that was mm -hmm. trying to learn the way, right. and and to me that was like the quintessence of Reggie's will manifest with a team that probably hadn't really seen it. Well. We had a young team, as you mentioned, uh, a young Ron Artest, um, Jamal Tinsley, Kevin Ollie was playing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Jermaine was just starting to come into his own. But, you know, the Nets were the number one seed, and I believe we were the eighth seed. Yeah. But this was a new number one Nets team because this was, you know, Jason Kidd had, had just gotten there, and um, they really hadn't experienced playoff basketball together. And I was trying to convince the guys, look, I mean, it's not like we're going against – uh, the Celtics or Chicago teams that have been there before, they're new to this just like we are. So let's give ourselves a shot. And, you know, you guys talk about the dunk and the shot. What I remember most about that series is the free throw I missed because there was two free throws. If I would have made both free throws and then made that shot, we probably would have ended up winning that series. But you're right, I was fouled on that dunk. Oh, you were. There's no question about it. I was about fouled. That. Come on, Joey Crawford. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know I haven't dunked in, like, 20 years, <laughs> give a brother a foul. <laughs> right? No question. Come on, Q. You, he fouled you. There's no doubt he fouled you. <laughs> you made sure everybody knew it, too, by the way. But it was entertaining just for the simple fact that the joy on those young guys' faces being in a game five, because at the time, the first right. rounds were game five mm -hmm. clinchers. Mm -hmm. And to be in the Meadowlands and have a chance to almost beat the Nets was so close. Uh, so close. And the other one, of course, that everybody wants to know about, 98 game four, the Bulls. I still think oh, yeah. those first two games, if you win one of those first two, you win yeah. the series, but George's Bulls go down, and then you guys probably win the championship. The three teams you were on, I think, could have won the championship. Mm -hmm. 94 and 98 were two of, the, two of the best, 95 maybe. But that you make that shot. Jordan, I think, held you and made it appear as though you were pushing off as you came off yes, the top. I yes, think that's, that's yes. the way I remember it. And, and then you, everybody's going crazy. But Bird's just standing there. Well, well <coughs> how, how many shots has Larry Bird made in his career? Right. He's been there, done that before. And he also knew that there were still seven tenths left, and the other guy was going Number to get a shot out. Right, which hit the lip of the oh, room, came oh, in and out. Oh, yeah. That's the last time my heart stopped, I think. But, I, I, you know, because you wanted to be that team to really retire Michael Jordan. That was the one thing that was kind of driving us was, we could send Michael Jordan to retirement <laughs> if we can win this series because you know he had already announced that this was his his last year. He came back with the Wizards, but we wanted to send Michael Jordan off, not you know going to the NBA Finals. Where we lost that game was in Game Seven, up six, oh, right. four minutes left, jump ball. Yep. With Rick Smith versus, like, Scotty Pippen, I believe it was, or something like that, where you would think he would win the jump ball. And Larry, to this day, regrets not calling timeout. Right. To this day. And they got the tip, hit a three, got Steve the Steve Kerr hit a three, and, and the momentum went the other way. Was, yeah.